But folks, there is this YouTuber named Mr. Beast. He's extraordinarily popular. We're talking like 137 million subscribers. His videos are viewed hundreds of millions of times. And uh, he likes to give a lot of charity, which of course means in Twitter world that he's a bad guy. Mr. Beast does these really extraordinarily watchable videos on YouTube. He puts extraordinary amounts of time and effort into making these videos, which means that he is wildly successful on YouTube. Well, he also gives a lot of charity. And he then gets, an ex- and then he gets just enormous amounts of crap for giving a lot of charity. When I say he's successful on YouTube, I mean like he has 137 million subscribers on YouTube. And he puts out videos like I survived 50 hours in Antarctica or Hydraulic Press versus Lamborghini. Right? These are some of his, his recently uploaded videos. He puts out maybe one a month. And these videos are like very highly produced, extraordinarily well done. And, um, and then he gives a lot of charity. So a month ago, for example, he gave money via his charity to, so that a thousand blind people could have surgeries that would allow them to see for the first time. And then he just did another video in which he offered shoes to kids who had never had shoes in South Africa. Here was some of the video. For hundreds of thousands of kids in South Africa, the only thing standing between them and an education is a simple pair of shoes. But before tackling this major problem by donating 20,000 pairs of shoes, we flew to Johannesburg, South Africa, where we found a charity called Barefoot No More that uses these plastic granules, and then it goes through all these tubes and does a bunch of other complicated mechanical stuff that eventually creates the perfect seamless shoe. Whoa, these are actually really nice. Okay, so he gives away the shoes, right? Nice thing to do. Pretty cool story. Naturally, the Twitterverse is filled with awful people, so they immediately start yelling at him. So you have people like, for example, Upward Boss. He tweets people praising things like this good guy, Mr. Beast. Ignore the reality that he makes a profit from these types of videos. This isn't really charity. So first of all, the money that he makes from the videos does go to charity on these particular videos. The charity videos go to his charity. But beyond that, let's assume for a second that he actually made money from those videos, and then he gave the money to charity. The problem is, please explain. Please explain the problem. Well, the real problem is, according to a lot of the people who do not like Mr. Beast and they do not like his charitable giving, that your obligation is not to actually do good in the world. Your obligation is to fight the evil capitalist system. That is what you have to do. Fight the evil, terrible, no good, very bad capitalist system that has raised literally more than half, like 80% of the world from abject poverty. Fight that system. So one rather famous tweet about Mr. Beast from September of 2020 reads, quote, every heartwarming human interest story in America is like, he raised $20,000 to keep 200 orphans from being crushed in the orphan crushing machine and then never asks why an orphan crushing machine exists or why you'd need to pay to prevent it from being used. Uh, unless you're fighting the system, private charity is not only a waste of time, it's actually bad because it incentivizes the continuation of the system. Now, this is nothing new in terms of left-wing philosophy. Bernie Sanders, back in 1981, ripped into private charity. Here's what he said, quote, I don't believe in charities. Why? Because he said, charity is a fundamental... He doesn't like the fundamental concept on which charity is based. He contended the government is supposed to do it. Right? Because if you give charity, then you're upholding a system of profit making. And profit making is bad. And so what we ought to do is not incentivize charity. Instead, what we ought to do is we ought to incentivize the end of the entire capitalist structure. And the people who argue this are idiots. They do not understand the value of capitalism. They do not understand the value of free markets. They don't understand that free exchange of goods and services, again, has lifted billions of people from abject poverty. And they're kind of bad people as well. If you spend your days on Twitter ripping into people who are giving charity to people who can't see, I'm sorry, you're the baddie. You're the bad guy. It's amazing that these folks even um, are out there, but you know, they are because the world is filled with people with terrible, terrible ideas. Okay, meanwhile, here's a a thing that I like. So another thing that I like here is um, Ron DeSantis, again, the way that he's handling the media right now is really, really good. So the media have lied about him already. They've already turned him into a combo of Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini. And they have decided that he's done a bunch of things he hasn't actually done. So the headline, for example, at Matt Drudge's Drudge Report, and Drudge has become sort of a left-wing tool in a wide variety of ways. He, uh, he, his headline right now, it's a picture of DeSantis. And the headline is, DeSantis runs from Florida blogger bill. DeSantis runs from Florida blogger bill. He didn't run from it. It wasn't his bill. So what the media did is one dumb state senator in Florida proposed a bill to get bloggers who were paid by interest groups to register with the government. DeSantis' name was not it. He didn't sponsor the bill. He didn't back the bill. Every story featuring this bill that he did not sponsor back 
support, call for. Every story featured his picture. He says, I'm not even behind the bill. And you put my picture on the bill because you want to slander me with a bill I don't support. And the headline from Drudge then is, DeSantis runs from Florida blogger bill. It's just wildly dishonest. Wildly, wildly dishonest. So Mr. Beast is doing something good for the world, but you should do something good for your own health. That would be balance of nature. So here's the thing. I'm very bad about eating my daily allotment of fruits and vegetables. I'm just not good about it. And this is one reason why I rely on balance of nature. Balance of nature, fruits and veggies are the best way to make sure you are getting essential nutritional ingredients every single day. Their products are 100% whole food. Balance of nature uses a cold vacuum process that preserves the natural phytonutrients in whole fruits and vegetables and encapsulates them for easy consumption. Balance of nature sent a bunch of their product down to the studio for us to try. It's kosher, so I've been able to rely on it. It is upping my energy level. It's making sure I get the nutrients I need. It can do the same thing for you. Go to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code Shapiro for 35% off your first order as a preferred customer. That's balanceofnature.com. Promo code Shapiro for 35% off your first preferred order. Again, the amount of vegetables you're supposed to cram down your gullet every single day to maintain your health, that's a lot of vegetables. And vegetables taste like vegetables. But Balance of Nature can help you if you're having a trouble with that thing. Go to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code Shapiro, 35% off your first order as a preferred customer. Again, balanceofnature.com. Promo code Shapiro for 35% off your first preferred order. Well, if all of this nonsense gives you a headache, well, you know, the truth is you need your medications. Now, here's the thing. In times of emergency, as we have seen, it's hard to get your medications. Sometimes the supply chains break down. Sometimes there's an actual emergency outside your front door and you can't get to the pharmacy in order to get the thing that you need. This is why you need the Jace case. But Jace Medical isn't just bringing you the Jace case, which is a basket of five of the most common antibiotics that you can just sort of have on reserve in case you need them. Right now, they are also giving you a free ebook that every family needs in their emergency preparedness kit. The ebook is maybe a five-minute read. You should download it and you should save it so you have it when you need it. The guide provides valuable information regarding emergency wound care, proper first aid, and how to safely use antibiotics when necessary. And Jace Medical makes it really easy to get the medication that you need and have it in your home. You just go to jacemedical.com and you talk to a licensed physician and they will green light you getting the antibiotics and they can go get them from the pharmacist and then you have them on reserve when you need them. But right now, they're also giving this free ebook, which is really useful. I've checked it out myself. Get this free ebook today at jacemedical.com forward slash Ben. That's J A S E medical.com forward slash Ben. Once more, jacemedical.com forward slash Ben. Okay, and, and another lie that they keep, t- they keep saying that he's banning books in the state of Florida. Again, I live in the state of Florida. I can get any book I damn well please. I'm an adult. I can order it on Amazon. It'll just come right to my door. It's amazing. Amazing this has been true in the United States for a very long time. What Ron DeSantis is saying is you should not have porn in school libraries, which seems fairly straightforward. Now, here's where we get to the part I like. Ron DeSantis did a presser yesterday in which he showed a video. The video that he showed was of the books that were in the school libraries and what exactly those books said. The books are so obscene that the networks were broadcasting had to tune away. So in other words, their argument is your seven-year-old should be able to access these books, but you as an adult should not be able to see What is in the school library on CNN? Because it's too obscene for you. Here's a little bit of Ron DeSantis' press conference yesterday. I didn't have to view what you just viewed, so uh, I'm glad glad I didn't. But I think that um, we need to have truth prevail. And so today we're going to be exposing, we've already exposed with that video, I think, this idea of of a book ban in Florida that somehow they don't want books in the library. That's a hoax. Uh, And that's really a a, a nasty hoax because it's a hoax in service of trying to pollute and sexualize our children. Uh, So we uh, have seen over many weeks. So first of all, I think that that video, I think some of the news had to cut the feed because it's graphic. DeSantis knows how to handle himself. He knows how to handle the media. And that is a good thing. Okay, time for some things that I hate. I have to say that the parenting strategy by which you completely destroy your children, you usher them into into chaos and confusion, sexual confusion, confusion about the realities of life, and then you exhibit them for the entire public to see is sick. There's something wrong with it. You should not be taking your 12-year-old having a mental issue and put them on the world stage in any case. Children deserve privacy. It is a thing that they deserve. And yet, this is exactly what Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union are doing. So Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, again, their whole thing is that um, is that children should have privacy except and we are taking our son, our 15 year old son and saying that he is a girl. And then we should uh, exhibit this 15 year old minor on a catwalk debut at Paris Fashion Week. This is textbook, terrible parenting textbook. And if there were a textbook and it said terrible parenting, pictures of Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union would appear apparently in that textbook. How you would take a 15 year old 
of any persuasion, by the way, and exhibit that person on a Paris Fashion Week stage while they were suffering from some sort of mental issue, any sort of issue that causes them pain or confusion. I don't know why you would do that, especially when you're talking about something as deep and abiding as a belief that you're a member, the lie, that you're a member of the opposite sex. And then you exhibit this for your own glorification because look what a wonderful parent I am because I'm so tolerant, I'm so diverse that I can take my son, dress him up as a girl, usher him into hormone therapy and presumably genital mutilating surgery. And then as a minor, 15 years old, who's been identifying this way since 12, 12 12-year-olds don't make any decisions in our society because 12-year-olds are not capable of making decisions in our society. We'll do this. And then we'll glorify ourselves by putting this boy in girls' clothing and in girls' makeup on a stage at Paris Fashion Week. I mean, I'm sorry, this is child cruelty. This is cruelty to a child. That's what this is. Here is, here's the Instagram. That is uh, Dwayne Wade with uh, his son, who is dressed as, uh, as a girl. Zaya's birth mother, Siobhan Funches Wade, was not in attendance, according to the Daily Mail, after she launched a petition to stop her trans child from legally changing her name and gender and claimed the child was being pressured financially to make the decision. That petition failed after Wade argued in court he had full authority to make decisions on behalf of Zaya. On Tuesday, the NBA star and his wife, Union, beamed with pride as they watched Zaya make her catwalk debut. Again, Zaya is a boy who is 15 years old and is now being trotted out in public. And, um, you know, you can... Such heroism, such unbelievable parenting heroism, which is really all about Munchausen syndrome by proxy and about attention getting on on the part of these parents. Well, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We will be getting into the mailbag. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro. Check out for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.